Okay, this is going to be somewhat of an impromptu uh, video, and I'm not going to record an introduction uh, to it. Um, but I received questions on uh, calculating the implied volatility of an option uh, for, for Indian stocks. Uh, the fact that Indian stocks are denominated in rupees as opposed to U.S. dollars is, is, is not important at all. You just put in your prices in your local currency. So the only time that might be an issue is if for some very bizarre reason you had some something denom denominated in your local currency, say rupees, and then you had a strike price in dollars. I, I have no idea why you would something like that would be done. But then, of course, you'd have to do some transformation from whatever currency to uh, make it internally consistent. So what I'm just going to do is just uh, uh, do a quick example um, using the uh, Nifty 50 exchange uh, options. Uh, they're not terribly liquid, but we'll use them anyways. Um, we will take a January... What uh, expiration did I take here? Uh, January 19th, which is 29 days from the point I'm recording this. I'm going to take uh, 1400 to be our strike price. And what I'm going to do is just average the bid and ask prices to come up with a uh, arithmetic mean uh, midpoint price. And this option chain uh, gives us the implied volatility is about 17%. So hopefully we'll get a number close to 17 with our code. And let me see if I can roll this up and figure out the index price. Uh, yeah, the index price is here. It's 1360110. So let's just use these numbers. Uh, where's my, here it is. Um, let's just use these numbers and see what we get with our Black Shoals uh, code. So this is our vectorized implied volatility code. So I'm just going to copy, uh, copy from this. So copy all of our imports. Um, we're not going to need any plotting or time delta because this is just going to be quick and dirty, nor will we need uh, matplotlib. And why is this all indented? Okay, there are imports. Let's copy our Newton's method code. And you could just as easily use the built-in scipy um, f cell for this. It might be a better choice, in fact. So, <clears throat> Newton's method, where are you, where are you, here you are. I'm just going to copy that, paste that in, and if you've seen this video, we did a lot of debugging, so this thing returns a bunch of extra crap that we don't need, so I'm just going to get rid of it. So this is going to return how many iterations, which is the count variable, and R is the root of the function, which is going to turn out to be our implied volatility. So let's just run that. And let's come back here and just copy all of our um, Black Shoals functions. So here we go. Paste that in. Uh, we're not going to need this. We won't need most of this. We're going to need the calculate Vega, obviously, for uh, for the Newton's method, because Vega is the derivative of the option price with respect to volatility, and it happens to be the same uh, for calls and puts. Our objective function, uh, we'll just, we're using a call in that option chain, so this is our objective function. So it's the call price given by the Black-Scholes model minus the actual op options price, and we want to find the sigma, which causes this to be equal to zero. And then here's all the other um, Black-Scholes call and Black-Scholes put prices. So let's come down here, run it, and S is equal to... S is equal to uh, 13601.10. That's our index price or stock price. Our uh, strike price K is going to be 14,000. 14, um, SK, we need the risk-free rate. And I looked that up earlier based on Indian T-bills. And that's going to be about 0 0.0293, so close to 3%. And the time until expiration, again, is 29 days. And this, this needs to be annualized, so divided by 365. And our call price, uh, C0, I'm going to call it C0 for the actual call price. And let's see here. That's going to be the average of those two numbers. I'm just going to copy those, come back in here and paste them. And... That looks good, and let's just divide this by 2. 
And the way these uh, the, these functions are written, all the arguments, additional arguments, uh, aside from implied volatility, need to be passed in as a tuple. So I'm going to create a variable called args, which is going to be equal to s k r t and c zero. Run that, and now we're good to go. We should just be able to call our Newton's method code. So let's say sigma, which is our desired implied volatility, and we'll uh, keep track of the counts is equal to our function Newton's method. Our objective function was call objective function. Uh, we need to pass, pass in the, the derivative of that function, which is our Vega function. So that was called calculate Vega. And we need to pass in an initial guess for our implied volatility. And I'm just going to say it's 50%, uh, which is kind of the number I have been using recently. So let's just see if that runs. It does not. What's the problem? Oh yeah, I forgot to pass in the arguments. So our args is equal to args. We have to pass in the stock uh, strike price and all that. So run that. And I'm trying to go too fast here. Args is equal to args. And then I screwed up uh, this beginning here. Sigma account, run that. Cool. So let's just print out Damn it! Let's print out our um, our implied volatility. Implied volatility. Print sigma, and we get a number of about eighteen and a half percent. And what was their number? Their number was 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 was. Where are you? Implied volatility. Uh, here you are, about seventeen percent. So we're pretty close. Um, I don't know what they're using for their price, if it's a midpoint, the, the bid, the ask. Um, we can probably even play around with it a little bit. Let's come back here and just say uh, C0 is equal to uh, we'll just copy this Paste that, run, 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 18.2%. So yeah, I mean, you can play around with some of these parameters. I don't know exactly what they're taking for the risk-free rate, um, things like that. So as long as we're in the bar ballpark, we are good. And that is it. I'm going to call it quit and see you later. And before signing off, let me say I will uh, uh, put this up on the uh, on GitHub. And I will also put in the screenshots of this options chain uh, just so that you can kind of look at my numbers and kind of see if you could reproduce them. So yeah, now until next time, I will see you.